The next option is the correlational method, which measures the relationship between two or more variables. For instance, we could investigate the relationship between the size of groups and their innovative output, or between the group leaders' behaviors and the number of products sold by the group. To do this, we first collect quantitative data, like survey ratings, and then calculate a correlation coefficient. This statistic describes the strength and direction of this relationship. Its value ranges from negative 1 to positive 1. The number tells us about its strength. A higher absolute number, one that's closer to negative 1 or positive 1, means the relationship is strong and the variables influence one another. Point 0.9, for instance. On the other hand, a lower absolute number, one that's closer to 0, indicates a weak one. The variables don't have much of an influence on one another. Point 0.2, for example. The sign of the number indicates the direction of the relationship. A positive number means both variables change in the same direction. An increase in one variable is met with an increase in the other one too. A negative number, however, indicates the variables change in opposite directions. When one increases, the other decreases. The main benefit of correlational methods is that they can help us predict one variable when we have information about the other one. So if we know how long a group has been working together, we can predict how successful they will be. This method also allows researchers to study variables that cannot be manipulated, such as age, gender, and ethnicity, as well as variables that should not be manipulated, such as pain, fear, and despair. In addition, correlational studies are often more practical than experiments, and they're useful for exploratory analyses. The main disadvantage of this method is that it doesn't allow us to infer causation. That's because we don't manipulate any variables or use a control group. We can't be sure whether variable A caused the change in variable B, or vice versa. It could also be that a third variable is the real cause of the observed changes. Only an experiment can help us understand causation. The correlational method can only indicate whether a relationship exists between the variables. So researchers often combine the two methods and use both to understand the phenomenon of interest.